Hashtag LPU Manila, hashtag LPU CLT. And once again, this is Tech in Demand, the College of Technology Career Paths and BS Esports program launch. Let's start and let's go to the details of the program. As we start, let's hear some messages from our LPU administration. Let's start with the video message of the OIC for Academic Affairs, Ms. Jennifer D. Tukpi, to be followed by the message of the university president, none less than attorney Roberto P. Laurel. Good day, future Lycians. It is with great pride that we announce the launching of the BS Esports program of Lyceum of the Philippines University of Manila, effective academic year 2021-2022, the first in the Philippines. With its long tradition of providing excellent and quality education through innovative and relevant programs, our students are assured that they will have the necessary knowledge skills, attitudes, and values that they need to become successful in their chosen careers. In order to achieve this for the BS Esports program, we have worked closely with Tier 1 Entertainment, the leading esports and gaming talent agency in the Philippines. From the very start, they have been actively involved in developing the curriculum, and we will continue to work with them to make sure that curriculum and instruction will remain responsive and relevant to the needs of the rapidly growing esports industry. We look forward to having you with us in LPU because in LPU, we take the lead. Hello, fellow Lyceans. I am very happy and excited to announce the first ever in the Philippines Bachelor of Science in Esports, recently approved by the CHED. BS Esports is the culmination of LPU's partnership with the number one eSports and talent agency, Tier 1 Entertainment. eSports has seen tremendous growth and enthusiasm among the young, especially in this increasingly digital age. eSports is a clear pathway to future careers and jobs in the digital world. With BS in eSports, LPU takes the lead in eSports education. And from the team that is creating a great impact, especially on the field of technology, Let's check some more opportunities that we have and we are going to discuss this morning through this video presentation, the College of Technology Career Paths. Let's watch this. You are still tuning in here at the Tech and Demand, the College of Technology Career Paths and BS Esports program launch. And now our first speaker holds a Bachelor of Science in Computer Science and Master of Science in Computer Science at AMA University and graduated with distinction at Technological Institute of the Philippines with a degree of Doctor in Information Technology. She has published research papers in Scopus Index journals, including ACM and IEEE, and presented her research papers in international conferences in Japan, Korea, Indonesia, and Harvard University, USA. A certified IBM academic associate, 
Microsoft Ambassador in the Philippines, a creditor of PCS Information and Computing Accreditation Board, and Philippine Association of Colleges and Universities Commission on Accreditation. She authored several computer programming books and specialized in data mining, database management system, artificial intelligence, virtual reality systems analyst, analysis, and design, and software engineering. Please welcome the Dean of the College of Technology from LPU Manila to discuss about IT career path, best technology jobs, and most in-demand careers in computing, Dr. Arlene Caballero. Good morning, Dr. Arlene, and welcome to the program. Yeah, good morning, Sir JR. Thank you so much for that generous introduction. So first and foremost, I would like to welcome everyone in this IT Career Path webinar and the BSE Sports launching. I'm so grateful and excited to be here with you today. So to our dear president, Attorney Roberto P. Laurel, to Ms. Jennifer D. Tupi, Officer in Charge for Academic Affairs, to Mr. Paolo Sotero Laurel, our Assistant Vice President for Non-Academic Operations, to Mr. Javier Antonio Laurel, who started all this, the Dean of the College of Fine Arts and Design, to Tier 1 officials, uh, Mr. Trag Gutierrez, Mr. John Gonzalez, and Mr. Ken Matsumoto, to the panel members and senior leaders of LPU and to our dear participants who joined us today. And to those who are listening to us live on Facebook, good morning, good morning everyone. So the topic that I will be discussing today is about um, the IT career path. So if you can uh, please um, share my the screen. Yeah, all right, thank you. So yeah, so it's about the IT career path, the best technology jobs and most in-demand careers in computing. So if you are a high school student and you are thinking about the career path you want to take, so this talk may interest you as I discuss the possible jobs, career, and opportunities. So I would also be discussing the most in-demand computing skills and the top 10 highest paying jobs for 2020. So probably you may be thinking because of the pandemic situation, what will be the career which is still be in demand in the future? So to be able to answer that, you must first think about where the future is going. So as we transition from the fourth to fifth industrial revolution, from digitalization to personalization, from artificial intelligence and robots to innovation and inclusivity, where uh, there is a, a deep and multi-level cooperation between people and machines. And as the majority of the companies are implementing a digital shift, we can clearly see where the future is going. So we can still say that um, computing and IT skills will remain to be the most in-demand career in this era. So this is because of the digital shift where everyone is using computers. And this also includes the field of esports and gaming. So information technology continues to change the way we live, even the way we play from a simple game like before we were playing games like a simple game in watch to virtual reality now. So IT changes the way we learn and the way we do business. So it is not surprising you know, that computing in IT is the fastest growing career field. And I believe that it will continue to be for the years to come because of the digitalization. So understanding the current IT career environment is the first step to prepare you for your plan, for your plan of uh, career. You know? So let me discuss the most sought after IT career paths based on the earning power, the growth potential, and the job outlook. If you can uh, share my, my next slide, please. So the first is mobile developer. So mobile developers are the ones who write programs for your mobile devices. So whether for Android or for Apple or Windows platform, so a mobile developer must learn the software development environment. 
and the programming uh, languages no, for their chosen platform. So since the latest uh, mobile devices and um, applications are changing the way how it changes the way we have we access information and the way how we do business, the consumers and business owners and programmers have embraced this innovation. So basically, this makes the mobile application developer one of the most demanded and fastest growing IT career paths. So mobile developers are hired by a variety of employers such as software companies and the entertainment industry and financial services and retailers. So if you want to develop mobile applications for any business you know, that operates an online website or web service, then this is a very promising career opportunity for you. So next is for you to become a, a database administrator. So if you are a type of person who is detail oriented or you are very organized and you, you like working in a structured environment, you may want to consider a career as a database administrator. So a database administrator uses software to store and organize data, such as um, information technology or customer shipping records and the like. So they make sure that data is available to users, that the data is um, accurate and um, is secure from any unauthorized access. So if you can see, you know, the company's database is the heart of business systems you know, that handles uh, payroll or manufac manufacturing or sales and more. So the database administrators really play a crucial role in an organization success. So uh, the database administrators may work in many different types of industries. So this includes computer system design and uh, related services firms, probably insurance companies or banks or hospitals. So if you want to uh, take this career, you need a balance of the technical skills and the business and communication skills, which is crucial to the success of a database administrator. So next is for you to become a web developer. So basically a web developer builds the web pages and web applications. So a basic web development workflow may include the collecting or creating web content. So this content may be uh, images and videos. Um, they are also involved in planning website, website uh, layout and uh, the navigation of it. Um, they're also coding the actual web pages and then they're testing it and then um, they're optimizing the website you know, for superior user experience and optimum performance. So if you will become a web developer, uh, you should be very, very fluent in the core web development scripting language, such as the HTML or the CSS and JavaScript. I know some of you are very familiar with this you know, because you have taken this you know, from your high school um, subjects. So. If you want to become a web developer, you should be very knowledgeable in one of the uh, one or more server side uh, programming languages such as Java or PHP. I know you're also uh, familiar with that. So if you want to build uh, websites you know, for clients and businesses, so this can be a potential career path for you. So the next is the network administrator. So maybe um, you will ask, what does a uh, network administrator do? So these are the people who's working behind the scene in an organization. Okay, so these are the, the people who are responsible for keeping an organization's computer network up to date, and they are operating as intended, no? So any com company you know, or organization that uses multiple computers or software platforms uh, needs a network admin, not to coordinate or to connect to different uh, systems. So maybe you will also ask, you know, what are the primary jobs of a network administrator? 
So basically, they install, okay? So they support and they manage the networks and computer system that keeps information flowing. So they implement as well, and they maintain the network, hardware, and software. They, they troubleshoot network uh, problems, and they also ensure you know, the network security, you know, that it's, uh, it's availability and the performance standard. So if you want to work behind the scenes, but definitely stands out among the IT roles, then you may, you may want to become a network administrator. Okay, so next is the network engineer or architects. Okay, so what are the possible jobs? So don't be confused with the network administrators because the network admi administrators are the ones who manage and support the network. While the network engineers or architects, they're, they're the ones who build and repair. Uh, they're responsible for the planning and design of data and communication networks. So basically these uh, network engineers are responsible for designing, um, implementing, and uh, monitoring, and uh, of course, they manage the local and wide area networks of an organization. So they also ensure you know, the maximum uptime for users. So the role can include um, designing of uh, system configurations. Uh, they're also documenting and managing the installation of a new network if there is. So they also maintain and upgrade existing system as necessary. So next will be the IT help desk or IT technician. So the IT technician is also one of the most in-demand tech jobs. Okay, So why? It is because their job is vital to the IT workforce. So many IT professionals begin their career as IT technicians, but then as they are exposed into uh, new IT disciplines and technologies, they branch out into other IT careers, such as network administrator or IT security specialist. So if you will ask, what does an IT help desk or IT technician do? So basically they provide um, technical support and uh, troubleshooting services to end users who need uh, their assistance with their computer and hardware and software. So if you will start as an IT technician, you need a uh, deep understanding of computer hardware and software. So uh, strong communication is also necessary. It's very essential because as a help the specialist, you must effectively uh, communicate solutions not to both technical and non-technical individuals. Okay, the next is very interesting. So if you want to become a uh, video game designer. So for those who are into esports and love gaming, and have a desire to learn the latest programming and you want to learn the art and the media production skills, then video game designer is the career path for you. So basically um, game designer merge creativity and the technical skills and a passion for gaming to create innovative games. Okay, so depending on your interest and of course the employment goals, the video game design offers a lot of opportunities for you. So most of the game designer jobs fall into three disciplines. So this can be, uh, you can be a game artist or you can be a game designer or game programmer. So basically, if you want to become a game artist, you are responsible for the aesthetic or visual style of the video games and simulations. And if you are into a game designer, then uh, you will be devising the missions, no? probably the challenges or puzzles no, that will be encountered in the gameplay. So they also create the narrative features of the game, such as storylines or role play mechanics and the character assets. Now, if you want to become a game programmer, so you should be very fluent in the popular video game development programming language. So th this could be uh, Java or C or C++. No? So this game programmer 
uh, also develops the artificial intelligence within the, the game itself. So the commands, uh, the reaction of the computer controlled elements. No? So they are the ones who, who who's uh, doing that. No? These are the game programmers. Yeah. So next is you could also be um, if you want to become a graphic designer. So if you are very creative and uh, you have a good eye for color and composition and you love technology at the same time, then the graphic designer career path is for you. So graphic designers um, work or duty includes the designing of web pages. They are laying out catalogs and of course newsletter and probably they're designing logos and marketing collaterals. So this also includes uh, print materials and interactive materials no, required by, by a company or required by your clients. Yeah, so they are the, the graphic artists. So next will be the user interface developer so or the UI developer. So if you are um, a UI uh, developer, so you are combining the programming and the psychology and the creative design to craft intuitive control for software and hardware. So the UI developer's task is to create an interface that behaves as users would expect it to behave. So they, uh, you know, to facilitate the seamless and efficient user experience. So they are the ones who's crafting it. Okay, so if you want to become a UI developer, you must be very fluent in front-end development languages such as HTML or CSS and JavaScript. So the next, next slide, please. So the next is um, the IT security specialist. So because of the, the cyber warfare, the demand for IT security specialists is high across all organizational structures. And this organization includes not only the uh, corporations, but also schools, yeah, nowadays, and even the government agencies. So this is the reason why IT security specialists become one of the most in-demand tech jobs. So if you want to be an IT specialist, then you should have an in-depth uh, understanding of the cybersecurity threats. So the technologies you know, that are, I, uh, I mean, that they are using and the uh, countermeasures you not know, to ensure that uh, you have a secure computer system. So they also, um, their job also includes the configuration. So configuring the, the um, security software you not know, to prevent the attacks or you are also in charge of educating your employees on data security. Um, they're also in charge of monitoring and um, protecting against the network breaches. And of course, uh, they should respond to the cyber attacks you know, with appropriate countermeasures. So those are the work of the IT security specialist. Next is the software engineer. So this is one of the tracks of computer science now we offered in College of Technology. So software engineers analyze the end users needs and they develop the software solutions for them. So if you want to be a software engineer, you should be very fluent in uh, object oriented programming languages such as Java or probably C or C++. Uh, it could be also be it could also it could also be a uh, Python. No? So this can also be an IT career path for you. Yeah. So next will be um, the system analyst. So computer system analysts are the big picture thinkers no, in um, IT. Okay. So they are uh, armed with an understanding of uh, both business and uh, technology. Okay, so these professionals, um, they actually analyze you know, the organizational, uh, the organizational uh, computer system. And uh, of course the procedure within it. And then eventually they recommend you know, strategic changes you not know, to increase the productivity and 
probably to reduce costs and to accomplish other business goals. Okay, so if you are working as a um, system analyst, you will be working closely with managers and the end users to define the system requirements and business goals. So yeah, that's uh, the work of a system analyst. Next is you can also be um, a computer programmer, okay? So pro computer programmers are responsible for the actual writing of the code, you know, so that makes up your computer software. So they are, they are tasked with a workflow of, uh, of a program. So they also write the codes, um, they test the program functionality, and they also documenting you know, the creation of the program. So if you want to become a computer programmer, um, you may work across um, many different uh, industries on projects ranging from the app development or writing software and many more, okay? So in this IT role, you may start as an entry-level position and then later you can work your way up to becoming a uh, senior computer programmer. Next will be the IT managers. So an IT manager is someone who is responsible for the overall performance of the company's electronic networks. So they lead the IT department and um, they, ens they ensure that um, their team operates efficiently and effectively aligned to the organizational goals. So these professionals work closely with senior executives no, and um, department heads no, for them to identify, to develop, and support new technology solutions. So IT managers are also responsible for creating and um, ensuring adherence no, to organizational IT policy and procedures, and of course, their, their best practices. And uh, next is the data scientist. Yes, this is the most uh, sought after um, IT career you know, in this uh, era. So these uh, data scientists mine and analyze data from a range of sources. You know, and these sources may include customer transactions or probably the click streams, um, social media, and uh, the log files. So their mission is to do predictive insights you know, that will influence um, business decisions, you know, of course, for competitive advantage. So they perform data mining. They are also doing modeling in support of high level business goals. Yes, so this is one of the most uh, in-demand careers you know, right now. And probably I'm on my last, um, Last career path, yes, that, that's the DevOps uh, engineer. So these DevOps uh, engineers are the bridge between the coding and the engineering. So these professionals work across um, departments. Um, they, they help the department to increase the company's productivity um, by developing and improving uh, various IT solutions. So the DevOps engineers usually they need experience you know, with coding language. So if you will be working as DevOps, you, will, you should be very uh, familiar with coding language. And of course, the software engineering skill and the security systems. And you should have a very strong analytical and problem solving skills and the collaboration skills. All right, so next slide, please. Okay, so what I am sharing you right now, what you're seeing now is the 10 most in-demand tech jobs for 2020. Okay, so as you can see, these jobs are the artificial intelligence uh, architect. You have the business intelligence analyst. You can be a cloud um, architect, uh, data scientists, developers, and so on. So what you're seeing is the 25th percentile. So these 
is the entry level workers, the rate of the entry level workers or those in industries with less competition. While the 50th uh, percentile is the salary with average experience, probably a job with uh, average complexity or, or work in industry with moderate competition. The 75th uh, percentile is with the above average experience, no? They have strong skills, no? That's their, the salary of these uh, people, no? Probably they have certifications, no? A, a more complex role or, or work in a fairly uh, competitive industry. While the 95th percentile, um, there are the people who has significant uh, experience. Uh, they have certifications. Um, they are, they have uh, specializations and the high level of expertise. So they also work in a strategic and highly complex role or in a highly competitive industry for talent. So that's the, the most um, in-demand tech jobs now for 2020. And the next uh, slide that I will be showing, okay, is the top 10 highest paying jobs for managers and assistant managers. So this was released by Dole last March, 2022. So as you can see, um, the IT related jobs is in the second highest paying jobs no, as of March, 2020, okay? So while the next slide, yes, yes, uh, as you can see, here's the top 10 highest paying jobs for supervisors. So again, just uh, released this March 2020. So these are the IT jobs. You know, the, uh, you know uh, as you can see, the IT related jobs still remain to be the most highest paying jobs you know, for supervisors. Okay, next will be for the junior executives. So probably these are um, the IT uh, people who has, uh, uh, I mean, uh, with one or maybe a less than five years, yes, work experience. Still, as you can see, it remains to be uh, the number one highest paying job, you know, the IT related jobs. And probably I have a one last um, slide that I want to share. So based from the sources, you now from internetshipline.com, um, these are the five IT jobs of the future. So it could be an AI engineer or enterprise architect, cloud architect, or network engineer, and a data scientist. Okay, so I want to show you the references on my next slide. So these are my references. So I hope um, this gave you an understanding about the current IT career and opportunities because um, understanding it will be your first step to prepare and plan for your career. So thank you so much for listening. So get back to you, Sir JR. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Arlene, for that very significant discussion this morning. And later on, ma'am, kasama pa rin namin kayo to entertain some questions from our audience in the Saturday morning event. So please, guys, keep the questions coming if you have clarifications or some reactions. You may comment on our live streaming via, L via LPU Manila FB page and through the Zoom webinar app using the Q&A button here at the meeting room. So that those are the career paths and some other details will be discussed later on during the open forum. And ngayon pa lang guys, we congratulate everyone for being part of this groundbreaking and historic event, the consummation of the academe and the Philippine esports industry. And now to give more some details about esports, let's watch this video presentation from Tier 1. Esports has emerged to be one of the biggest and fastest growing industries around the world. Universities have started offering esports degree programs and scholarships. Now, it's our turn. The first in the Philippines, Lyceum of the Philippines University and Tier 1 Entertainment bring you BS Esports. 
Catch the launch on May 8th, 2021. Lyceum of the Philippines University, in partnership with Tier 1 Entertainment, the premier Southeast Asian esports and gaming entertainment company, brings you the first ever Bachelor of Science degree in esports in the Philippines. Catch the launch on May 8, 2021. The Lyceum of the Philippines University. BS Esports program brought to you in partnership with Tier 1 Entertainment will offer two tracks. Get behind the scenes of running an esports organization with esports management or take a crack at game design and development. Go beyond gaming with BS Esports and equip yourself with the skills to get ready for a professional career. Learn from the best of the best with instructors from LPU and Tier 1. Catch the launch on May 8th, 2021. Our next speaker has been in the Philippines esports industry since its very inception. He was here during the days where the term esports wasn't even a term yet. Known as one half of the most explosive and pioneering shoutcasters in the industry, he is respected by the gaming community thanks to his contributions in the growth of the local esports scene in the country. From his early shoutcasting days, to his founding MSI's first professional gaming team, to his organizing of the biggest tournaments in the country, the community has seen him grow with the industry that he loved and supported. Please welcome the chief executive officer of the premier Southeast Asian gaming and esports entertainment company, Tier One Entertainment, to discuss about carving career path in esports. Without further ado, the man of the hour, Mr. Trike Gutierrez. Good morning, Sir Trike, and welcome to the program. Welcome to LPU. Hi, guys. Good morning. Um, is it okay for me to share my screen? Go ahead, sir. Okay, good. Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, I know there's a lot of fuss about BS Esports, and there's a lot of excitement about this course. And I guess before I start, I just want to say that um, I'm so happy to see a lot of people really, um, to see a lot of people um, excited about this. And um, basically, let me start and share with you the paths for um, Esports. Before anything else, I want to start with uh, our story in Tier One Entertainment. Um, back in 2017, when we co-found, when I co-founded a company with the Lodi Goshing Fiao, this was really barely a vision. What we wanted was to be able to create a company that will be the home of the new generation of gamers in the country. And from that vision, we made a lot of things to make sure that this is executed very well. And from there. We there were a lot of things that we have that we were able to innovate, and I can't believe that today, nandito na tayo sa araw na meron na tayong BS Esports, and I'm very very excited about this. So before anything else, no, I just want to make sure that this is clarified because I've been in the esports industry since 2010. I was a player back in 2008, and up until today in 2021, there's still a lot of people calling esports e-games. So I just want to clarify that this is not e-games. E-games is a totally different thing. Esports is esports. And also in the spelling of esports, it's not e-sports, it's esports. So this was confirmed um, by the AP Style Guide. So make sure lang na alam na ng mga lahat ng tao ngayon. Because this is something na parang proof that, alam mo yun, like not a lot of people really understand the industry. And even in the terminologies are not very, uh, hindi pa ganun ka clear, di ba? So in terms of the founders of Tier 1, um, Alodi and I believe in the importance of education. I graduated in the La Salle University. Um, she graduated in Ateneo. So as much as we were able to create this company and build and, and, and build this company, yung backgrounds namin were different in, in the spaces that we're in. Like it's not, it's, I didn't study esports, pero my background was more about organizational communication 
And that definitely helped me in building this company. But at the same time, I still believe that specializing and learning more about the in and outs of the space in the academe is really very important before going into the workforce. So yeah, that. And um, so for those who don't know what Tier 1 Entertainment is about, um, most people know us for, you know, the management company of Team Payaman or the ones that handles the streamers like Wrecker, Bianca, Ashley, Juniboy, Dexy, and others. But there's actually a lot of people behind everything that's happening in Tier 1. In fact, we have 100 people in the company. Um, those are not just from the Philippines. We have people from Malaysia. We have people from Myanmar and in the Philippines also, right? So basically what I'm trying to say here is that as much as you see all of the people in front, there's a lot of people on the back end also. So um, last year, we also launched our first esports team um, called Blacklist International. We have an MLBB team um, that's competing in MPL uh, this year um, and they're doing very well. We also have a PUBG Mobile team. We have a Legends of Rintera team. We have a Free Fire team in Malaysia. And basically, we'll, we will announce uh, a chess team as well. So this just goes to show how much uh, opportunities there are in the talent side of things. But I just want to be very clear on the fact that this course is not going to be about the streamers. It's not going to be about the talents. It's about the people who are going to be working on the back end. So para lang clear, no? hindi to para sa streamers, hindi to para sa players, para to sa mga tao magtatrabaho on the back end. So before I proceed to the promise of esports, I want to take a step back and bring you to the history of basketball. Because, you know, like a lot of people still don't understand the concept of esports and why people actually watch video games. Diba? Pero back in 1891, um, basketball was something that James Naismith uh, created in, in a university. And in 2021, it's already a multi-billion dollar industry. So whenever there's someone telling you that, you know, it's just people playing video games, it's something that people can take seriously, basketball was something like that back in 1891. And something to share with you in terms of the milestones of basketball. Para lang meron tayong idea on how industries develop and how sports develop. From the invention of basketball in 1891, in 1936, basketball appeared on the first Olympics. So imagine how many years before it got there. And then after that, it was included in the NCAA in 1939. And then in 1946, that's when the NBA was founded, which we now watch and enjoy today. So... What I'm here to share you is that industries are not made overnight. It takes multiple years for an industry to grow. And it takes a lot of people to build an industry. And for that reason, let me present to you esports in 2019. In 2019, this is what esports look like. So this is an event that I personally shoutcasted back in 2018. But in 2019, this was an event in China. So it's called the International. The price for the International is um, more than 1 billion pesos. So sobrang laki na ng premium niya. And what people don't see is how many people are working on the back end to make sure that an event like this happens. From the people who are working on the broadcast to the people who are helping on the marketing to the to the gaming developers who created the game, maraming trabaho na involved and maraming tao na involved sa pag-create ng mga ganitong type ng events. And that's just one. Um, in the next years, I anticipate that there will be a big development in esports. And to share with you that development, I want to stick to the facts. So let me get to the figures. The truth is, um, 2.7 billion ang nanonood ng gamers around na, ng gaming around the world and only 500 million are watching esports so ang ibig sabihin niyan is out of the 2.7 billion na nanonood ng iba't ibang games the true esports watchers are 500 million but by 2023 we're expecting that number to grow so just to differentiate what gaming and esports are gaming is more about your casual yung mga tao naglalaro lang for fun ganun and for esports it's really the hardcore competitions, the professional competitions that happen, that happen around the globe. So the good part is, and this is something that um, 
is uh kumaga parang swerte tayo is because 54 per, 54% of the gamers around the world are in Asia so we're in the right market and we're in the center and heart of Southeast Asia um sobrang laki ng potential for esports specifically in Asia but hopefully Um, hindi lang yon ang tinitingnan natin. There will be a lot of opportunities around the globe. I mean, a lot of Filipinos have worked in different parts of the globe, in different industries, and I believe in the competence of Filipinos. So, naniniwala ako na hindi lang sa Asia yung capability natin mag-work, um, and, but actually around the globe. So, that, and um, something that you also have to um, know in the development of esports and the and the reason why more people are really into this industry right now it's just because of the rise of mobile games remember back in 2010 2015 during the comp shop days i'm sure nandun rin kayo kung the age niyo ako diba like after a class or during your breaks you go to a computer cafe and that was the leisure na na meron tayo because that's probably the cheapest way to spend your time uh, kung nag-aaral ka pa But nowadays, people are not playing in computer shops. People are playing at home. People are playing in their room, sitting with a mobile phone. So, nagbago na rin yung platform. There are still a lot of um, PC gamers in the country. And of course, I have nothing but respect to the PC platform and the ako galing. But at the same time, I can't help but recognize the rise of a new industry inside this space, which is yung mobile scene. And this is something that I feel like is inevitable to accept. Um, may mga tao na parang hindi pa rin nila kinakategorize yun na, na esports. But this is esports. And in fact, 49% na ng gamers ang mobile gamers. So there's actually more of them soon um, than, the, than the PC gamers. So, so this is something that's very uh, is way exciting kasi than to get a PC. Not a lot of people so this is something that's PCs, very exciting for us. And um, in terms of the pandemic, I mean, this is something that's real. Um, in the coming years, because probably one of the few that's really rising right now. And the reason why is because 83% of people are playing games more. I've seen this um, in my circle where a lot of people who didn't play games before are now playing. Marami tayong nakikita na habang naghihintay ng order ng Grab, naglalaro ng Mobile Legends sa mga iba't ibang mga restaurants. Marami tayong nakikita ng mga guard na nanonood ng naglalaro ng Mobile Legends. And, and I think The MPL is also a testament to the growth of um, of uh, people understanding esports because the MPL is now being watched by hundreds and thousands of viewers online. That's the biggest league that we have right now. And in terms of esports content, 29% are watching more from this demographic. 18% of sports fans are becoming esports fans because hindi naman maraming sports events na nangyayari ngayon. And there is a lot of um, thirst for watching competition. And this is something that they're watching right now. And 37% are spending more. So that means there's going to be more money in this industry. So let's talk about money, right? Alam nyo naman, di ba? We're, the, we're, we're supporting Team Payaman. And, and, we're, and as much as people um, sometimes think of money as evil, I feel like money is a tool. Money is a tool to be able to do more things for the things that you love. And in esports, by 2023, this is going to be a $1.6 billion industry according to Newzoo. So this is something that um, we're very optimistic about. Um, kung titignan nyo yung, uh, yung graph na to, it started $776 million dollars in 2018. 2019, it's 957 million. By 2020, it's 1 billion. And by 2023, it's 1.6 billion. So there's not a lot of industries na may ganito katinding growth. But this is the digital revolution. And alam naman natin na digital is the future. And you see, you're seeing it in your online classes. You're seeing it in a lot of people understanding the importance of technology and how people can be connected and how the space becomes flat because of the internet, di ba? Imagine kung pandemic tapos walang internet, imagine how your lives are so much different. So, this is really the future and this is the sports of the digital world and this is something that we're very optimistic about. So, in terms of where the money is coming from and this is something that I want you guys to understand, 
it's mostly coming from sponsorships right now. 17% are from media rights, 11% from publisher fees, 10% from ticket sales um, and, and, and take, uh, merchant tickets, and 2% from streaming. So in understanding on how to grow an industry, we need to understand where the revenues are coming from. Sino ba at saan ba manggagaling yung mga pampasweldo? Paano ba lalaki yung mga companies? And, and basically, these are where the, money's, uh, where the money is coming from. And gusto ko lang na maintindihan nyo kung saan nanggagaling yung pera. And in the Philippines, dito muna tayo mag-focus because most of the numbers that I shared with you are the numbers that are, are for global. So for the Philippines, we have um, 100 plus uh, million in population. This is the most interesting fact right here. Three out of four Filipinos now are gamers. And um, this is uh, online. Uh, three out of four online na Filipino are gamers. So this is something that's very interesting. So ibig sabihin noon sa lahat ng mga nag-online na tao, karamihan doon naglalaro na. And this is something that we have to understand and see because the data is proof that inevitable na talaga ang esports and and gaming in the country. In fact, mobile gaming is a 460 million dollar industry in the in the Philippines. And um, this is something that's very interesting to show para sa mga taong hindi pa rin naniniwala sa industriya na to. And something that I'm very proud of, um, I remember I, I, I entered this um, industry back in 2010, like what uh, was mentioned by the host. In a time na esports wasn't even a term. And over, uh, I, and more than, and after more than 10 years of being in esports, I can say that the Filipino talent is really a global caliber talent in this space. Number one in events. We've produced one of the best, if not more, uh, if not a lot of events na global um, standard. We produced um, globally recognized teams. I mean, sa mga nagdota to, nagdota to Jan, I'm sure kilala nyo yung TNC. They've won multi-million dollars and it didn't happen overnight. There were a lot of people behind them. There's a lot of, you know, people who made them uh, or helped them get there. Maraming taong tumulong mag-create ng content, mag-create ng iba't ibang mga tournaments to, to, to get them better. And yun yung mga bagay na nagawa na natin. We produced one of the top caliber esports player in Abed Yusop. Kilala natin yan kung nagdodota to tayo. Um, he is um, signed by one of the biggest esports companies in the world, EG, right now. So naniniwala ako na kaya talaga ng Pinoy pagdating sa eksena na to. We produce world champions. Um, Brand Esports just recently um, won the Mobile Legends uh, World Championship. And um, just recently also, we produced Sea Games, the first Southeast Asian games that featured esports. And I would like to congratulate everyone who was involved in that. Um, na nagawa natin to sa Pilipinas, di ba? And imagine... Being able to mount that type of event in the Philippines, that goes to show how much competent we are in, in really doing something na hindi pa nagagawa ng mga ibang bansa. And we have a very, uh, we have a growing esports ecosystem. A lot of people don't know about the in and outs of the industry. Hindi pa nila naintindihan kung paano talaga sila umiikot. Pero in this slide, I want to recognize everyone who believe in this industry before there was money, before there was nothing. I mean, hindi ko na kayo papangalan ng lahat, pero alam ko na marami talagang dugot, pawis, hindi lang po ako yung nagsakripisyo para sa industriya na to, kaya to umabot sa ganito. And, ano, I want to thank all of them for all of the contributions that they, that they did for the industry. Hindi lang po tier one yung bumubuo ng industriya na to. Marami pa pong iba't ibang kumpanya, maraming tao yung nagsakripisyo para makarating kami dito. And, um, Basically, for the pillars of the industry, and this is something that I really want to stress today, hindi po biro bumuo ng industriya. It will take more than these three things. Pero in this presentation, let me just give you the most important things, at least in my opinion. Number one is infrastructure. The reason why is because kung mabagal pa rin yung internet, there's no way that esports is going to thrive in the Philippines. And because of that, you know, Hopefully, in the future, this becomes better. 
um, the infrastructure of you know technology in terms of the availability of the PCs, availability of the cell phones, ability of availability of the facilities. Kailangan available lahat yan. And not just in Metro Manila, but in different parts of the Philippines, kailangan maging available yan. Kasi hindi talaga truly ma-appreciate ng mga tao kung ano yung experience, kung ano yung ginagawa natin up until the infrastructure um, uh, is there and, and makasunod. Kung baga, hindi lang sa Metro Manila, kundi sa buong bansa. The next one is people. People is everything. At naniniwala ako dyan. Um, This industry will require a lot of people contributing to make sure that this space develops and, and grows in the years to come. And alam naman natin, even in tier one, we have 100 plus people, we have 120, 420 plus streamers, and people are going to be the ones na magiging foundation of this industry. And thus, it's very important for them to have next education. So... There are some people in our industry right now who learn this on the go. May mga tao rin sa industriya na talagang nanood ng YouTube, tumingin ng mga nangyayari sa ibang bansa, and they self-learn to be professionals in this industry. But as someone who really believes in the foundation of education and the importance of the academe, this is where the importance of the BS Esports course is for me. Because imagine if nagawa namin yung mga napakita ko, and if this industry grew without the backing of the academe, without the right foundation of courses and, and you know, like all of the systems that come with, with a four-year course, what more can we do if meron na tayo nito? And this is, the, and this is something and the main reason why gusto ko siyang mangyari. And... I want to thank LPU for taking the lead in the esports course because when we first mentioned this, um, I, I I remember last year ba or last last year, di ko na matanda sa sobrang dami ng yare. Pero sobrang daming negative and positive comments. A lot of people questioned why this was needed, and I really commend LPU for approaching us in building this course. And sabi nga nila. The first graduates of this course is going to be four years after the launch. So, hindi lang nila tinitingnan yung today, hindi lang nila tinitingnan yung next year, hindi lang nila yung next next year, but actually yung four years after this year and the years to come, right? And I think that's the type of foresight that we need in this industry, regardless of wherever it goes. Pero gusto ko lang din iwanan sa inyo na, if I'm not uh, wrong, ha? I believe there there will be 80 slots for this course na magiging available um, soon. I don't want you to come here wanting for a job. I don't want you to come here wanting for um, for the returns dahil nakita nyo lahat ng to. Because I want to share with you that, you know, we're not here to promise you jobs. We're not here to promise you a future. We're not here to even promise you that future secured or you'll have security or, or, or you'll have the best future if you pursue this. But what I can promise you is that if you enter this industry, there is an ecosystem already. So in the ecosystem, let me share with you ano yung mga meron. So right now, at least in 2021, um, uh, you have your publishers, the ones that create uh, the games, that distributes the games, the games themselves. Of course, maraming mga involved dyan, either marketing, broadcasting, the different you know aspects of promoting um, their games through esports. You have your leagues, maraming mga liga na umiikot ngayon from your Overwatch League to the International, to Riot, to, to a lot of them, to the MPL. And I'm anticipating that there will be more leagues in the years to come, especially more people are understanding the importance of esports and, and, the, and the experience and the enjoyment of watching a live esports game is really as it's really the same as watching an NBA or any game that people watched before. And teams, for example, teams are a multi-billion, uh, a multi-million um, uh, worth companies now. So you have Navi, you have um, EG, you have a lot of other organizations. And I feel like there will be more organizations in the future na, na magsiseta pa. 
you have your brand. So, ay, sorry. So, you have your brand. So, basically, if you are a brand and you want to promote in esports, like like me before, like I, I used to work in MSI Philippines. And when I was there, I needed to know the industry in order to promote the laptop to the esports space. So, whether it's a new bag from Tumi, whether it's a it's a new watch from Garmin, it's it's a new product from whatever, they will require an expertise in the space. Kung, kung gusto nyong malaman, uh, kung gusto nilang malaman kung paano mag-promote sa industry na to. Lastly, the platforms. Twitch, YouTube, Facebook Gaming, you know, all of these platforms that are, that have a part of their content ecosystem in, um, in, in esports and gaming. They need people who understand this space. Because this is a space that only recognizes authenticity and expertise. So this is something na talagang kailangan gets natin. So sumunod, ano ba yung mga ibang available um, jobs? So you have your so syempre at the center of it all are games and players. You have your content creators, you know the streamers and shoutcasters again. Hindi po ito para sa course na to. Kung gusto niyo mag-shoutcasters at maging streamer, sign kayo sa tier 1. Pero kung gusto niyo mag-take on ng ibang mga 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 jobs dito like being a general manager, event organizer, IT support, um, web developers, marketing, corporate sponsorship, business developers, theory crafters, coaches, analysts. I mean, these are the jobs available right now in the market in 2021. But in 2026, hindi natin alam kung ano yung available by then. But the point is, with these pillars and the ecosystem that's built around esports and gaming, um, marami talagang opportunities that are available. But at the same time, like I mentioned before this slide, Hopefully, the ones who will take this course will really look to contribute. And this is something that I really want to make sure na maiwan ko sa lahat ng nanonood nito. Na we didn't build this industry wanting to get the money. We didn't start because gusto namin yumaman or sumikat or makilala sa, sa isang space na kilala na. But because we wanted to contribute first and foremost. And I believe if you come from a point na you want to contribute, mas ano eh, mas magiging powerful talaga yung journey nyo dito. And like I said, and I, I can't stress this enough, I'm, out of all the things that I mentioned, I'm not here to promise jobs. I'm not here to promise you a secured future. Don't tell your mom and your dad or whoever it is that's going to pay for your tuition and say, masher to. Ma, 100% to. Dad, 100% to. Let me take this course. Because wala namang 100% talaga sa buhay. There's always a part na kailangan mo talagang mag-risk. And to me, education is not a risk. Once mag-aral ka, matapos mo to, if this is something that you want to pursue after four years, then be it. Pero hindi din naman secret na a lot of people have pursued something else outside of, outside of their courses na naging successful. But in the end, I believe that if this course provides you a good foundation and a good enough, um, um, a good enough um, structure and framework, it will equip you to contribute. Yun yung pinaka-importante for us because whether there will be jobs, whether there will be a promise, ang 100% ako is we will need more people to contribute in this space because the more people who will contribute, the more it is na magiging sure that this industry will not just stay, but it will thrive more. And there are a lot of industries where the Philippines is left behind. Here we are the first. I am a proud Filipino and hopefully this is one industry na maundi lang tayo mauna. Kung hindi, tayo yung mag-take ng lead. And um, like what LPU, um, the dean of LPU said earlier, and I, and I guess in this slide, I want to thank everyone from the LPU University for making sure that this was passed uh, and, 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 and everything, all the details and everything um, na, na, na cover na nila. As, uh, parang gusto ko lang magpasalamat po sa kanilang lahat. Kasi wala, wala to kung hindi dahil sa kanila. Kasi we are not the academic experts they are. And um, I want to um, end this presentation with this quote. 
as Lyceum takes the lead in education, we will do our best to make sure that esports is truly top tier. And um, yeah, that's it for us. And um, ano, excited na ako na makita kayo four years from now if you're going to enter this course. Thank you. And from the leader of the industry of esports, that's Mr. Trike Gutierrez. Thank you, Sir Trike, for that very enticing and fruitful discussion about esports. Kaya naman, dire-diretso yun na natin. Tuloy-tuloy na tayo to discuss our questions raised dito sa ating chat box, sa comment section. Kaya naman, ipakita na natin kung ano pa yung mga kailangan nilang malaman dito sa atin here on our COT programs and also the new program in BS Esports. Joining me here are Dr. Arlene Caballero and Sir Trike Gutierrez to discuss um, some important matters, of course, and also to entertain those questions raised. I think, um, Dr. Arlene, based on your um, discussion kanina and also with Sir Trike, kumpisa na natin since we are all excited with the program here on BS Esports. Ma'am, can you discuss the program details or yung mga subjects offered, especially dito sa ating new program, the BS Esports? Yeah, um, I think we have the, those are the frequently asked questions. So if we can share the slides, Sir JR. Yes, ma'am, of course. Dahil ilan nga yan dun sa mga madalas sa ating natatanong, aside of course, kung paano mag-enroll, how do you start the journey in LPU? Um, kung may scholarship or tuition fee. Those matters are already posted sa ating website. But this, ma'am, let's go through with the details of the BS Esports. Can we have the slide, please? Actually, you have answered some of the questions from the Zoom Q&A. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these are the frequently asked questions no, um, in esports uh, program. If you go next, please. So what are the two specializations offered in esports? So if we can share, next slide, please. Okay, so first and foremost, before I uh, show that, so the College of Technology is offering three programs now, no? like the first program is Bachelor of Science in Computer Science with track in Data Science and Analytics and Software Engineering. The other is the, the Bachelor of Science in Information Technology with two tracks information security and technopreneurship. The third program that we're launching like right now, can you please show the next uh, slide, please? It's the BS Esports program. So it's a four-year course program. So the title is Bachelor of Science in Esports with two specializations. The, specialization, the first specialization is the esports management and the second is the game design and development. So here are the esports career opportunities for esports management and game design and development. So again, as uh, Sir Trike said, this is not for um, if you want to be a shoutcasters or professional gamers. You are working at the back end, so you can be a team manager, owner for esports management. You can be a sales and ideation manager, marketing peer executive. Um, these are the career opportunities for you. And if you want to, become, to to go to this track or specialization, the game design and development, you can be a game designer, the, the ones that uh, I have already discussed earlier. Um, you can be a, a programmer, developer, associate game quality assurance and all. And just like what Sir Trike uh, showed a while ago, uh, these are the jobs no, in the ecosystem of esports. And can you go to my next slide? So I, I, I just like to share with them also the career opportunities for BS IT and uh, BS Computer Science. No, just very quick. All right. So next question that we can also answer. I think, Mama, we would like to invite then Sister Trike to join us here at Open Forum. Sister yep, Trike, yep. this um, pertains po sa atin, uh, for the Tier 1. And to tier one representative, why did you choose to partner with Lice, with LPU among all colleges for the BS Esports program? Kanina na discuss naman yan. Pero um, are there any plan to bring it to other colleges like other NCAA and UAAP schools? Um, siguro for the for respect for Lice, yung hindi ko muna sa sagutin yan. I mean, nothing concrete right now. Wala naman nag-offer sa amin ng kahit ano. Pero 
when this was um, brought to us by um, Lyceum, syempre, we were very, very happy na, na they're doing this. And syempre, um, that, is, that, that is probably something that's, uh, that's possible. But right now, nothing on the pipeline. Okay, if I can also add to that. So LPU is um, CHED, Autonomous Institution, and um, internal, internationally accredited university. Uh, we are QSTARS rated uh, university, and this speak of the, uh, I mean, a lot about uh, quality education. So we can answer maybe the second question. So what are the courses included in BSE Sports? I think they're looking forward to this. No? So they want to, I mean, see no, or, uh, the glimpse of what are the courses no, will be uh, included or offered in BSE Sports program. So what you're seeing right now is the, uh, are the uh, eSports core courses. So you have here the introduction to eSports, you have esports game technology, esports ecosystem. So you are, uh, you will understand the the ones you know, that uh, I mean discussed by Sir Trike a while ago. So you have esports broadcasting. Um, of course, since uh, we have this um, specialization in game design and development, we have introduction to game design and development. So we have digital production, event planning and strategy, and esports market market analysis, analy sorry, analytics and global trends. So you can also see you know, some of the um, other professional courses in the next slide. Okay, very quickly. So these are other professional courses, and there's lots of course we are um, we are. Um, I mean, comply you know, with the minimum requirement of CHED you know, for the general education. So yes, so here are the professional courses. All right. Yes, sir, JR. All right, can we go through the next question, ma'am? Yeah, sure. All right. Now, naman, kanina, we discussed na rin yung importance of esports and then its relevance, pero we are still getting this question. Sir Chai, why do we need esports? Um, so esports, kasi just to share with you, um, how it started, is it's, siguro it it started with uh, the, the with the development of um of free to play business model sa lahat ng di hindi masyadong may alam about sa gaming. Pag naglalaro ka kasi ng games. Um, before, the business model was you buy the first game and then you buy the second game, the third game, and the fourth game. And that's where the money was coming from. Pero when the free-to-play the free to play gaming business model started, that means free yung game, but they earned from the microtransactions that, that are in the game. So with that came retention. Ibig sabihin nun, they wanted people to stay in the game instead of them wanting to sell new game, new game, new game. And esports was one of the best retentions for people to stay in the game because as you create more competitions within the game, people stay there, mas lumalaki yung, yung, yung player pool, gumagaling yung mga tao. And then from there, may mga nag-branch out na ng iba't ibang industry around it from events management to broadcast to live streaming to streaming. So, so feeling ko, as long as gaming is here and that business model is here, Esports is going to stay, and a lot of sports have developed over the years. It, this is may pinag-usapan na nasa mapupunta siya sa Olympics, nasa Southeast Asian Games na siya. Uh, Kung bagay yung spirit of competition never naman ay mawawala in in different forms, uh, in shape or form lang. And in this case, digital lang siya. Yun lang yung siguro ng kaibahan niya. Thank you, Sir Trey. And um, Ma'am Arlina, isa pa sa mga question na nakuha natin is. Eh, are we going to have a face-to-face -face learning this coming semester? And paano din natin ikakonduct ang ating esports and other COT subjects? Yeah. For the first semester of 2020-2021 until second semester of 2020-2021, so our design is um, um, online flexible learning. So it depends on the situation. If the government permits, then we could have a blended uh, learning. So a mix of face-to-face uh, -face and uh, online flexible learning. All right. Thank you, Dean Arlene. 
And uh, now, Dean Arlene and uh, Sir Chai, sino naman po ang mga magtuturo? Who will be the experts na magtuturo dito sa ating program, especially with BS Esports? Yeah. So, of course, we have um, a lot of masters uh, graduate no, of their... Um, with the specialization in marketing and um, public relations and others. So as you can see, some of those courses, um, definitely um, there is no um, I person yet no, with master's degree in BS, uh, uh, sorry, in, in esports. No? Um, if I may share, you know, like for example, when computer science was offered first, so there is no, um, Bachelor of Science, uh, Master of uh, uh, Computer Science then, no? but there are allied courses such as the BS Mathematics. So definitely that will also uh, happen no? in this uh, BS Esports program since we are the first in the Philippines no, to offer it. So I think uh, we should also understand how a curriculum is being crafted and it's being, uh, I mean, evolving. So of course we have masters graduates of you know in their uh, with, with in their specialization you no know, with with all and of course we have um, the partner you no know, um, industry you no know, the tier one you know, to help us and uh, we are also having um, they're one of their of our industry advisory boards you know that uh, we will be consulting to um, improve you know, the content of the mm -hmm. curriculum. Yep. Um, I, I want to um, talk about this. So uh, something in that I want to mention is that Jan Gonzalez, um, our, one of our directors in Tier 1, is one of the reasons why this happened. Because he made the connection between me and um, Javi Laurel. So he is also actively seeking um, professionals from other companies outside of Tier 1 to help teach in this course. Because for us, we will be lending some of our you know, executives to teach in this course. They're very much willing to share their knowledge and expertise in guidance ng, uh, ng proper educational system ng, ng Lyceum to make sure that um, we're equipped to, to, to teach and follow the, the curriculum. But at the same time, um, John Gonzalez is also actively seeking um, other uh, professionals from outside of our company to teach. Um, in this space as well. Kasi hindi lang naman kami yung um, company dito sa esports. And hopefully, in, as an industry, uh, mag, magtulong-tulungan na lang tayo na, na maturuan yung next generation na makakatulong rin sa atin down the line. Thank you, Sir Trek and uh, Dean Arlene. Now, let's go through the next question. Uh, sir and ma'am, what are the equipments naman po or technical requirements needed? here on BS Esports. I guess kay Sir Trike, um, is there any equipment sir needed ng mga students natin pagka nag-enroll sila with this BS Esports? Um, 100%. Uh, Siyempre, kailangan mo pa rin talaga ng, ng PC tsaka, uh, tsaka mobile phone siguro uh, na talagang um, capable magran no mga kailangan mong iran because at the end of the day we can't expect you know uh, people to understand like yun yung mentioned to analogy before when we were discussing this paano ka mag uh, ano mag aaral ng F1 kung wala kang kotse ng F1 di ba so in this case for esports unfortunately that is um, something that you need you need a PC or a laptop or uh, and a and a mobile phone na kayang uh, maglaro ng games because you know, um, yun eh, kailangan talaga siya. It's, it's yun yung mention ko kanina eh, infrastructure. It's the infrastructure part of things dito sa esports. And I believe naman right now, there are a lot of um, more value for money options uh, for gaming devices right now. Actually, um, sir, track, uh, for them to enroll um, in BS esports, at first, they just need um, a gadget like a mobile phones not to um, access the my LP learning portal of LPU since we will be uh, implementing this uh, in the flexible learning uh, scheme. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I naalala ko yung sinabi mo sir right no like uh, um, how you will play basketball without a ball no so definitely so they will be needing at least a gadget no for 
them to at least uh, view the content of their courses. So when they enroll in this first semester of school year 2021-2022. Sir Chaik, um, ito naman on a lighter side. Kanina ang dami nating nakukuha ng mga ganitong um, comments, especially on our FB live streaming. Kalaman, um, to tier one representative, pag-graduate po ba ng BS Esports, matik na na talent na kagad or member na ng tier one? <laughs> Um, pagdating sa talent, um, like I mentioned, hindi po, di ba? So this is for more, more for the back end. Um, kasi for us, you want to make sure that the people we hire are really equipped um, to support the top tier talents na meron kami. So I can't promise that, but what I can promise is an internship program. So um, it's not just a local internship program that we're trying to work uh, for. I mentioned ko na rin to sa LPU in our in our conversations before in our discussions. Now, we want to actually have internships abroad, if possible. We will try to talk to uh, other gaming organizations outside and, and possibly have um, internships abroad. Possibly pa lang. But if not, local internships in Tier 1 magiging available na yun for this course. But not a job. <laughs> Hindi 100% yun. That's a good point. Especially, marami rin nagtatanong kung makakapag-OJT Bisala with our industry partner. Now, sir, mm. ito naman, um, more inclined with uh, great uh, gamers or streamers. Can this course also be a stepping stone for some of gamers or streamers who would like to go pro? Mm. Sorry, can you repeat that question? Can this course, ba, sir, will be a stepping stone para ma maging pro sila dun sa ating mga gamers or streamers? Um, I don't think so, eh. To be honest, I don't think so because um, the challenge you say with being a streamer and a pro player is that yung time, yung time, yung challenge because um, the prime of a pro player, the reality of it now is really young. There are players who are 14 years old. There are players who are 17 years old. And I don't know what's the, what's the climate uh, uh, kung, kung ano yung climate in 2026 pero for me, hindi kasi iba talaga yung pro play and yung streaming dito sa ginagawa it may equip you some way or form because you might understand how to edit you might, uh, you might understand how to market pero for me coming in into this course you want to work in the back end dapat yung nasa isip mo if that's what you want to go pro or to, to, to stream Sign with us. Pero kung gusto mo, tong, kung gusto mo pa rin itong itake, I mean, pwede. Pero mahirap for me. Thank you, sir. And uh, now naman with our uh, Zoom webinar, this is from Danny Eremedeo. I have a few questions. Well, first is, uh, knowing the esports scene in the Philippines, will it thrive more than MPL? I mean, will there, will there be more space made more than Mobile Leg Legends itself? Yeah, and this is the reason why we want more people to contribute. Because, you know, as a CEO, I understand that kung magsiset up na isang company, you need competent manpower, right? And if there's not much competent manpower, and then how can you set up companies, right? So, syempre, the more supply of competent people, the more companies can set up here, right? So, this is something that I feel like is very important in the space. Yun niya, like I mentioned before, infrastructure, um, people and education. And kung meron na tayong um, educated people looking to contribute, I feel like there will be more opportunities in the space outside of the MPL by 2026. Thanks for that, um, Sir Chaik. Now, this is a diverse um, question, um, a combination of the physical and the digital. So what makes the esports management track career options? different from the likes of other team managers from the traditional sports and those eyeing to manage traditional sports teams can take esports management track um ako, i'm not an expert on that course so maybe um dean you can take that but i, I have some answers but more, more technical lang. dean arlene I'm sorry, you're on mute. Yeah, yeah. Sorry for that. Go ahead, ma'am. Uh, 
Yes, if you can see how we crafted the, the program, the curriculum. So for BS management, of course, the usual management uh, courses, but these are in the context of esports, no? So basically, so uh, they will learn the, the ecosystem and um, this is more actually specialized and uh, more uh, specific no, to esports. Thanks, ma'am. Going through the next question again from Danny here in our Zoom webinar. Sir, for the endemic or and non-endemic brands for esports locally, will BS Esports benefit from it too? Mm, siguro. Um, I, I guess yes, because as more people understand, for example, we have subjects as introduction of esports, esports business models, diba? esports ecosystems. As people understand that more and study that on a very academic on an academic level, syempre, the understanding will be so much different. You'll have the foundation and the understanding of how the world works in esports, and from there you can apply it once you enter the non-endemic space, provided that that's something that you need. Because you know, for example, like I mentioned earlier, diba? like Garmin, a watch. Just they just created a watch for esports. So this is something na parang the technology and everything, it has to understand the dynamics kung ano talaga yung nangyari sa industriya and, and, and everything that comes with it. If not, you won't be able to understand how to market it, how to sell it, how to, yung mga iba't ibang mga bagay pa that, that are involved in the non-endemic space. Thank you, sir. Trike with that um, answer. Now, um, another relevant uh, question here uh, from our live streaming. Is there some kind of assurance, example, a pragmatic research for a career aside from the hope of the supposed, quote-unquote, growing industry in our country? Uh, Dean or um, Sir Trike? Of course, uh, definitely um, because uh, it's about your future. So we cannot really promise just like what uh, Sir Trike said. No, but then um, we made sure that we will as we crafted the uh, the curriculum of course we we are bringing you um a very um concrete and um just like uh what sir trike said a while ago uh for you to be prepared not to, to that industry and you know as the uh, industry said no, that it's growing so we as a university what we are doing is to Dean, early sorry to cut you. Medyo na bumibitaw lang yung signal natin with your audio. But um, mm -hmm. we understand your um, uh, answer with that. Um, Sir Chike, um, do you have any additional inputs with that? Yeah, yun yeah. Like um, what Dean Ar Arlene said, like, yun talaga eh. Like, focus more on the promise of the equipment when it comes to what's needed. Um, pero just like any other course, you know, as you enter the workforce, experience yeah. is still something that's very important eh. So where we want to focus on is making sure that we are equipping people with the right theories and the right understanding uh, pagdating sa industriya na to, plus the other things that are needed. But at the same time, the promise of jobs, the promise of other things, um, it's, it's, it's something na hindi namin gustong gawin. Kung baga hindi namin gustong ipangako yun. Thank you, Sir Trike and uh, Dean Arlene. Now, for the questions naman related with our admission process for the transferees with the requirements or guidelines, those um, info are posted on our website. That's manila.lpu.edu.ph. So please click the admission and click the enrollment procedure. Or you may visit our social media account. That's LPU Manila or Lyceum the Philippines University Manila in Facebook and click the new students enrollment process and procedures. Nandiyan na yung details din natin, guys, kung paano kayo makapag-transfer, paano kayo makakapag-enroll, paano kayo ma-admit in LPU Manila. And now, um, I'm just checking if meron pa rin tayong mga questions here. I think um, one last um, with this from um, Jus Cruz. Jus Cruz, um, can I enter the esports industry kahit po na hindi ako graduate sa BS Esports? 
Any take on that, um, sir or um, ma'am? Um, I guess, yes, of course. No, Since even before we offer this BS Esports, there are, I mean, a lot of, you know, uh, professions who are already in the uh, esports industry. No, but then uh, this is something that uh, we are, I mean, uh, we started and we don't want to be left behind behind because other uh, universities in abroad are offering this BSP sports already. So to give you um, a figure, at least um, we are not actually the first one. No, we are not first in the world. So there are universities abroad and colleges are all, all who already, I mean, offer this. No, at least twenty schools and universities and colleges. Uh, some of them are our benchmark schools, and um, we are starting it now here in the Philippines. So that's why we're, we offer it. So, but then if you are not yet, of course, uh, ABS Esports graduate, and that is that will be uh, after four years, of course, you can uh, enter you know, as you have the skills and competency you know, in this uh, esports industry. All right, thank you, Dean Arlene and Sir Chai. And um, I think that concludes our question and answer part on this, on, on this part of the program. As we move forward to the next part, let's show, this, let's show the, our slide with our webinar evaluation. We invite everyone, we'd like to hear it from you, your feedback and suggestions. We invite you to accomplish this evaluation form, which will serve as basis for the e-certificate. Kindly visit this um, link, that's bit.ly slash LPU Webinar Evaluation 2021. Again, that's bit.ly slash LPU Webinar Evaluation 2021. So for our um, for the attendees, your certificates will be sent a week after this program. So next week, you will receive your certificate through your email. And please kind of fill out our webinar evaluation link. That's bit.ly slash LP webinar evaluation 2021 as we read the certificate of record of attendance to our participants. This certificate of attendance is given to for attending the College of Technology webinar entitled Tech in Demand, the College of Technology Career Paths and BS Esports Program Launch, held from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. via Zoom meeting given this eighth day of May. 2021, signed Director Sandra Recto of the Communication Public Affairs, Dean Arlene Caballero of the College of Technology and OIC for Academic Affairs, Ms. Jennifer Tukpi. And now, let's recognize our speakers this morning to start with, let's have the certificate of our first speaker, Dean Arlene Caballero, as we read the certificate of recognition for our Dean this certificate of recognition is given to Dr. Arlene R. Caballero for sharing her invaluable time and expertise as a speaker in the webinar entitled Tech in Demand, the COD Career Paths and BS Esports Program Launch. Signed Director Recto, Ms. G Mirna G. Reyes, Director of Human Resource, and Ms. Jennifer Tukpi, OIC for Academic Affairs. Ms. Uh, Dean Arlene, any last few words to our participants and attendees this morning? Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for the certificate of recognition. So again, um, I wanted to welcome you all in the interview. So uh, it's great to see you. Uh, inquire you know, to, uh, I mean, with us, and uh, you know, we can answer all of your questions. And uh, thank you so much for attending this um, um, career path webinar and uh, BSK Sports uh, launching. See you all in LPU. Thank you, Dean Arlene. Let's move forward to our second speaker. This morning, this certificate of recognition is given to Mr. Tri Gutierrez for sharing his invaluable time and expertise as a speaker in the webinar entitled Tech in Demand, the College of Technology Career Paths and BS Esports Program Launch, held from 9 to 11 a.m. via Zoom meeting given this 8th day of May 2021, signed Director Sandra G. Recto, Director of Communication and Public Affairs, Director Mirna G. Reyes, Director of Human Resource Department, and OIC for Academic Affairs, Ms. Jennifer Tukpi. Sir Trike, any message, please? Um, 
again, I want to thank um, the, the, the Laurel family and all of the management and the deans and directors of, of um, Lyceum University of the Philippines for making this possible. Um, we've gone through a lot of scrutiny when we first announced this, but just like any other thing that's related to innovation, usually it requires someone uh, usually it, it requires people to believe in something for it to happen. And usually and with an entity like them believing in this and doing this and it's finally happening today, um, that's a testament to them really taking the lead, in, especially in this space. So oh, thank you talaga to Lyceum for making this possible. Uh, coming from Tier 1, we're, we're, we're going to do our best to help them and guide them in the, with this course. And to the 80 students or more na magiging part nito, um, looking forward to working with you in the future and um, at the same time, sana mag-aaral kayo mabuti talaga kapag iyihin nyo para makapag-contribute kayo sa industriya na to. At um, dun sa iba naman na, na, na hindi naman parang um, convinced pa dito, that's the reason why we need more education. Because we need to educate them more and um, we need to let them understand what we're really doing here in this space. Last but not the least, I want to thank John Gonzalez and Ken Matsumoto from our team for really making sure that the details are covered and all of the things um, na kailangan magawa ay magawa. And again, for John, for making this connection possible. Kung hindi dahil sa kanya, hindi mangyayari to. So, yeah. Thank you, Sir Chaik. And let's connect to your message. Let's watch this video message coming from the CEO of Tier 1, Mr. Chaik Gutierrez. Hi guys, I'm Trike Gutierrez, the CEO of Tier 1 Entertainment. Today, we are very excited to announce the launch of a new program LPU has prepared for all of you. In behalf of the company and the whole Tier 1 family, we would like to welcome you to the esports industry. And now to answer the questions related to the admission procedures and process, let's show this um, some slides regarding our enrollment procedure to start with here in LPU Manila. Let's learn without limits as we have no entrance test for the first semester of AY 2021 to 2022. For the details, kindly check our website and social media account. Next to that is wala rin tayong tuition fee increase. There's no tuition fee increase in LPU Manila for the first semester of AY 2021, 2022. Moving forward, with the next announcement to that. Let's see it. Uh, let's see some more details with the enrollment reservation. It is ongoing until May 15, 2021. Just visit the link posted in our website and social media account, or please do a screenshot of this enrollment reservation that is that is ongoing until May 15, 2021. Moving forward with the admission details, as we see here, online enrollment is ongoing. The early enrollment is ongoing until June 14, and the start of regular enrollment is on June 15. To see the details, the requirements, guidelines, procedures of our early enrollment and the enrollment in LPU Manila, please visit this link. Do a screenshot, copy the link posted on our social media account, or visit our website, that's manila.lpu.edu.ph. Move forward with the next announcement here that we prepared if you want to connect with us. To contact us through our social media account, through website, or our email, please, you may do so. That's inquiry at lpu.edu.ph, www.lpu.edu.ph, and we are present in, in Facebook and Twitter, LPU Manila, in Instagram and YouTube, that's LPU Manila Official. And once again, we would like to thank everyone for taking your time and be, to be part of this momentous event, the groundbreaking, the first in the Philippines, the BS Esports program launch. This has been your host, JR, and in behalf of the technical team headed of the, from the Communication Public Affairs, Ms. Sandra G. Recto, from the College of Technology headed by Dean Arlene Caballero, our technical team, Sir Robert Tyron Narito, Sir John Kenneth Pacifico, and Sir Noli Villanueva. Once again, this has been your host, JR, saying, Choose to take the lead. Choose LPU and Lyceans and future Lyceans.